once it's recorded. Um, I'm, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to send you. Okay, cool. So I'm going to send you the recording um, and I'm also going to send you the slides. So um, again, if you've taken my classes before, you know, you can just sit back, relax and listen um, and not have to take a ton of notes. Um, I've taught this class before online. This is a brand new class. If you've taken my Facebook class before, this is brand new. Um, I have taught it once or twice in the past month or two for um, different organizations or industries. And, um, and so it is fresh content, um, but usually it's only about an hour long. Um, so today you're going to get some extra special um, time because after the class, I should have time to actually log in live to Facebook and possibly even spend a couple of minutes showing you two tools that we use to really um, maximize um, Facebook management. We um, like to use Canva to create cool, really good looking fresh graphics. And then also um, Buffer, which is the tool that we prefer to use to schedule social media posts. So um, I'll, I'll get into that a little later. First, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to share my screen. So know that um, normally if I have two monitors up, I can look at the chat window in one and, and the presentation in the other, but um, I have just my laptop today. So I'll only be checking the chat window every so often. Maybe Amy, you can um, keep an eye on that. And if you see any questions pop up, um, we can we can do that. So I'm going to go ahead share my screen over here and move some windows around can i get some stuff out of the way here all right thumbs up if you see my facebook title screen all right awesome very good here we go so that's what we're going to be talking about today is primarily um increasing your engagement on Facebook. Um, a lot of times people really get super hyper focused on vanity metrics, such as the number of likes on their page. You know, a lot of times we work with people, they come in and they're like, I really just want to have 1000 likes, or I really want this, or I really want that. And, um, and really the real metric you want to be studying or looking at or paying attention to is the number of um, engagement, that, the amount of engagement that you have. And engagement is not only likes to your posts and your page, but it's also how many people are commenting, how many people are clicking share, how many people are checking in. Um, and I know that the Home Builders Association is hosting and sponsoring this class. So there are some home builder um, and real estate related folks in on this call, but we also heard this with people outside of that industry. So there are um, all kinds of people sitting in on this call today. Um, by the way, let me back up a little bit because I don't want anybody to be confused. Um, you will see that this presentation has shop marketing pros on it and, and you might be wondering what in the world um i literally left that up because i wanted to explain so we are five stones media which most of you know us as but we do have a division of five stones called shop marketing pros where we're specializing in helping um independent automotive repair shop owners and um i actually wanted to just use this as an opportunity to share that um so i left that branding on this presentation specifically to to let you know that um because i know some people have been like whoa what are you doing are you are, are you quitting five so no it's so i just wanted to use that as an opportunity to answer that question um so um vanity metrics don't be so focused on them we want you to pay attention to engagement which is likes comments shares check-ins um, and, and while you, if you're a home builder, you don't have a physical location necessarily, unless you have an office where you're meeting with people. And so, um, if, if that's you, then the home building process is a really exciting time in life. So when you're sitting down to have that initial meeting or the planning meter or whatever it might be in your process, that's a great time to take a photo and have them check in um, to your office or no matter what type of business you have. If you have a physical location where people can check in, that counts as engagement. Reviews counts as engagement. 
um, clicking the call to action button at the top of your Facebook page, which I'll show you. You know, a lot of people have it set as message us or call now or book or learn more. So that little button on your cover image, that's engagement. Um, private messaging your page, that's engagement. So we're gonna talk about all of those things and how you can um, increase your engagement. So let's talk about why use social media um, and whether Facebook is still relevant because I've been hearing same kind of thing with email marketing. There was a time when I would hear people um, saying, you know, we shouldn't use email marketing. It's kind of dead. That's not really um, what people are using anymore. And that's not really true. Um, and then same kind of case today with Facebook. Um, people were frustrated with the enormous amount of ads and all of the all around the Facebook interface and people are moving to Instagram and now they're moving to TikTok. Is Facebook still relevant? The answer is yes, it is. Even though um, there, and it, as you see here, I've got um, a, a, a graphic that 29% of people have deleted or removed social media in general because they were just so overloaded by it. Um, when you look at the whole picture, the amount of people that are um, moving away from, from Facebook is really not so large that it's going to impact you. Facebook is absolutely still relevant, but what you really need to think about is your audience. Is your audience still on Facebook? And the best way to do that is literally ask your customers, are you on social media? Which platform is your favorite? Which one do you, um, and you know, actually that's not the right question because you might ask me which platform is my favorite quite frankly my favorite is Instagram me personally but the one that I use the most is Facebook so um, that's kind of a, a different question that you'll want to um, ask yourself so um, hey don't forget that if you're not muted um, we can hear your conversation so be sure to mute yourself um, and so yes even though Facebook is sort of on the decline it's still a good place to be. And here's some stats for you. I'm not gonna go over every single one of them because I'm gonna send you this presentation. You can certainly um, take a moment to look back at this at another time. But um, it still has two and a half billion people who use it every month. Um, it's actually still seeing global growth across the world. Now, depending on your business, Global growth may not matter to you. You might be hyper local and all you care about is your, um, you, if you're a home builder, you're probably not building a home in another state. You're building a home right there where you are. It, same thing with, I was talking about automotive repair shops or really depending on who you are. Most of you are not gonna be super concerned with global growth, but just know that it is still seeing growth um, across the world. The people that are getting away from it is no surprise. This is not news, um, but it's the it's a younger group of people, and um, and so just keep in mind that you really want to know your audience um, to know if Facebook is the right place for you to be. Okay, um, the reason why you want to use social media, and you know, I was just mentioning a minute ago about people um, kind of slowing down their use of social media because they're feeling overloaded, you have to be providing valuable content. And so I want you to, I use the, the, um, the phrase, slow your scroll. I want you to think about the next time you're on Facebook and you're scrolling through, right? One swipe of, a, of that scroll, you can go through, I think like six Facebook one time. What causes you to slow your scroll? What causes you to, I literally have my phone right here. If I pulled out Facebook and I'm looking through, what's going to cause me to go, whoa, 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 back up. What was that? What causes you to slow your scroll. What's interesting? What is appealing? You need to be sharing content that is going to cause someone to slow their scroll. Meaningful, get personal, um, entertain people, uh, engage in conversation with them. And look, one thing I always say, two things. One, done is better than perfect. Don't get so stressed out and so overwhelmed with, I have to do it absolutely perfectly. And then that derails you from doing anything. Okay. So remember that done is better than perfect. 
But at the same time, if you're going to do something, do it well, go all in. Um, I have here, don't, you don't have time to waste. So if doing Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn is too much for you, then don't do all of that. Pick one thing and really focus on it. Okay. Um, that one thing usually encourages people the most. A lot of times I teach classes. I used to teach kind of a, a general social media class that covered five platforms. And what I found was at the end of that class, people were so overwhelmed with um, just, uh, I, I can't do all the things. And so um, I found myself having to encourage people and say, don't feel like you have to do all the things, pick one. And that's why I love that this class is just about Facebook. As I Kim, mentioned when we first, yes. Kim, um, yes. I have one of our members, Rhonda, had, um, she, she chatted in, if Facebook is on the decline, what is up and coming? And that may be somewhere else in this presentation, but I wanted you to know, and I wanted her to know that I saw it, okay? Yep, absolutely. No, I'm, I'm happy to, to chime in on that. So one, keep in mind the amount of decline that Facebook is experiencing is in one particular age range. So if that age range is your customer, then that's a great question. What is on the rise? And I'm going to tell you, Instagram um, is still on the rise, but what's really taking everyone by storm, brace yourselves, um, is TikTok. TikTok is um, video, but um, it's super engaging. It's really fun. Um, there are lots of businesses that are utilizing TikTok. So, um, and look, TikTok is a great place for the content that we're talking about. So if you're looking for some fun, um, relevant, cool, hip, exciting um, content to share, you can find that on TikTok and then share it on your Facebook page. So I hope that answers your question. Um, but I, I tend to be a little hesitant to share that because people get so, again, the, oh no, another platform. But again, it really depends on your audience. So really tap into um, the idea of really getting to know your audience and be where they are. Um, so I mentioned in the very beginning that engagement is more important than vanity metrics um, such as likes. So we really want to focus on engagement, um, getting people engaged. And that's going to be sharing information that they want. Um, so many businesses get super consumed with being very one-sided in their social media. In other words, they're sharing, you know, here's a blog post, here's an article that I found, here's some tips. Um, I don't think I said the name of this campground, this RV um, resort where we are. Um, it's complete, just unbelievably fantastic. But just this morning, I went to their Facebook page to look for some information. And what I found was, all their posting um, and look their page looks great but all their posting is like articles nothing fresh and cool about this place right here it's all links and all articles so be super careful about not being boring not being one-sided remember that facebook is social media it's intended for you to have a conversation. It's social. It's two-sided. It's two parties that are engaging with one another. Um, so when someone uh, comments on a post and see this all the time, not responding to them, like if they slowed their scroll and then they took a moment to comment, that's a big deal. You should be replying to them. And then I love taking it a step further and not only responding to the, their comment, but there's an option there that your page can send them a private message from their comment. So if you post something and I comment, you can now send me a message. Now I'm taking that engagement even farther. I'm, um, I'm creating a deeper conversation. I'm building that relationship through Facebook. So um, I want you to really dig deeper and think about um, how can you take the gift that's being given to you in Facebook with likes and comments and shares 
even sharing, if someone shares your post and they, I'll show you this when we get into Facebook in it after the presentation, um, the slides part of it. When someone shares your post, if their share is public, your page can go comment on that share and say, um, uh, hey, thanks for sharing. We really appreciate it or something like that. And then the other thing that I want to let you know is, um, and I always say this in my Facebook classes and so many people don't have it, but I don't know if you can see um, on my phone, I have the Facebook, oh, hold on. I have the Facebook Pages Manager app right there. So I have the regular Facebook app, but I also have the Pages Manager app. The regular Facebook app is blue with the F. The Pages Manager app is orange. And that is where you can go to that app and manage your Facebook page entirely as your page. You don't have so many people worry about, am I posting as myself or am I posting as my page? Am I commenting this way or that way? That will relieve a lot of that. So be sure that you're using the Pages Manager app on your phone. So let's look at some social trends. Um, and I, we just, right, we just talked about, um, talked about that. So um, I love TikTok. It's disrupting the social media world. Um, as I mentioned, just fresh, entertaining, fun content. And I have this here in my Facebook presentation because you can, like I said, you can go find content on TikTok to share on your Facebook page. So it's a great place to um, check out. Another trend, um, and this is a, an image of a video that we did for a repair shop friend of ours, um, video. When you finally decide, and I've been saying for probably three years now, if you're not using video, you need to get over yourself and you need to start using video. Um, it's not new, but it is still highly relevant. We are still seeing um, that video performs unbelievably well. And quite frankly, in addition to video being a trend, another trend is that we're starting to see longer videos are, um, are doing really well. So originally when video kind of told her that was keep your videos short and simple while they're in less minute, there are videos that are longer that are doing really, really well, but it's important to not tell. So if you're teaching, for example, maybe you want to um, do some behind the scenes types of videos or maybe you want to teach someone how to do something or you want to show someone um, the why behind what you're doing video is still highly relevant and you can do it um, in a longer um, a longer format now um, by the way i do want to tell you that if you do video is that um you on facebook you want to upload your video natively to facebook just like you would upload a picture you would upload the video. Instead of there being a video on YouTube and you're sharing a link to the video on YouTube, the reason why is that you're actually sharing a link. Facebook sees that that's taking you to um, YouTube. Facebook does not want you to leave Facebook. So when you have a video to share, go directly into Facebook and upload the video natively into Facebook. Go through the steps, answer the questions, like fill in the title and the description. And that way, um, not only will the video auto play and we'll explain that video automatically, it's not people away from Facebook. If it's going to take people away from Facebook, Facebook's gonna decrease that reach. By decreasing reach, automatically your engagement is gonna be impacted. So upload that video natively into Facebook, okay? Um, I mentioned a minute ago about um, taking, you know, when someone comments and sending them a private message. Private messaging is a big trend right now. Um, people are private messaging pages for customer service issues, for questions about, your hours of operation, your address, simple questions, that sort of thing. So um, utilize your private message to extend the conversation. Keep people engaged. Um, I'm not saying you need to write a book and that it needs to go on for months at a time, but 
use that private messaging feature um, to your benefit. People will tell you more in a private message than they will on a public comment. So utilize your private messaging. Also in your Facebook page, um, in the settings, you can go in and set up um, frequently asked questions so that when people come to your page, the private messenger automatically opens up and they can click some common questions. It gives you four, um, four spaces for four different questions. So think about, and you're gonna hear this as a recurring theme in this presentation when it comes to content. Think about the most commonly asked questions on your Facebook page. Turn those into kind of like a robot that answers the questions for people. Um, and you can set that up with custom questions right in the settings of your Facebook page, which I'll show you in a little bit. Stories, okay, so um, when stories, First, uh, okay, they weren't called stories uh, on Snapchat, but then Instagram started doing, you know, where um, when you look at a Facebook page and you see the circles across the top of the page, those are stories. So those are not living on your Facebook page. Um, these are there for 24 hours and then they go away. Um, but you can see here, that stories are a great trend happening right now because as I have here, they're very visual, they're fun, they're engaging. There are less ads in the stories than there are in the news feed. So the news feed is what you're scrolling through. The stories are across the top. And when you start playing one, it will play that story and then automatically go, almost like Netflix just automatically starts the next um, episode. That's how Facebook stories are. You watch. So if I have a story that I've posted on my profile, then it's going to automatically um, play the next one and then the next person's and the next person's. And I think the ratio of stories to ads is five to one, if I'm remembering correctly. So people are enjoying stories because um, it's just more organic right now and um, they're just doing really, really well. So, um, Kind of, and I will try to um, spend a little bit of time showing you that. But um, stories can be really fun, and, uh, and and do very well for your business page if you take advantage of that opportunity. Relevance that will never die. This is um, it, it's just I've been talking about being relevant since the beginning. Probably my very first social media class, I talked about your content needs to be relevant. If you know your audience, you should be sharing information that they're looking for. What do they want? What do they need? What, um, you know, sometimes uh, we don't know what we don't know. So as a customer, what are the things that your customers need to know and they don't even know that they need to know it? Create a video about that um, topic or that question that people are asking and share that information. Um, really take the time and this kind of comes back to in-person, good old fashioned customer service, having conversations with your customers, really getting to know them. Um, in our um, CRM, um, customer relationship management tool, we actually make notes of things. Um, in phone you know I make know that person and think something that I want to remember when so we had our um, our first business was an automotive repair shop in our um, shop software I would um, literally go in and enter their child's name or that their child plays soccer or where that customer works or what they're, you know, they're really a golf enthusiast or whatever it might be. So I really try to get to know my customers really well. The more you know your customer, the more relevant you can be in the content that you are sharing um, on your Facebook page. So relevance is critical. Um, relationships. I talked earlier about how your engagement back to your Facebook followers is going to help build the relationships. You have kind of a natural opportunity to nurture those relationships. Um, one way that you can do that is showcasing the culture of your company. 
I will tell you, we literally just had a conversation at Five Stones um, about our own social. It has really taken um, an approach that we want to pivot a little bit because we've gotten so heavy and so focused on our company culture and showing our um, brand's human side that we think we need to bring that back a little bit. We need to add more content in like what I'm about to talk to you about as we continue um, forward. You'll, you'll hear me talk about they ask, you answer. So um, that's, we've really just said, okay, in June, we need to sprinkle in more of that they ask you answer type of content which again i'm going to explain in just a minute so remember that being responsive builds those relationships the worst thing that can happen is your content is great and you, you cause someone to slow their scroll and they stop and they like what they see and they comment on it and then you never respond to them just imagine if you're in the grocery store and you're in line and you start talking to the person next to you and they're like this and you're just sitting there talking to them but they're not responding to you that's rude right um you don't want people to have that experience on social media so use your social media um responsiveness to build those relationships audience and community is um really a huge trend right now especially on facebook um, with regard to, so let me back up a little bit. When um, Mark Zuckerberg had to go testify before Congress, right, with all the privacy issues and data and all of that, as a result of that, Facebook has made, and they started making these changes before that, but they really gotten aggressive with the idea of Facebook building community. Um, so Facebook groups have become absolutely huge in the strategy of Facebook going forward. It started in 2019. It is absolutely where they're going with 2020. And so depending on who you are and what you, um, what your, your customers are looking for and the type of business that you have, one thing you could consider doing is creating a Facebook group for your tribe, for your community, all around one particular common theme or common um, topic. And so that would be a great place to build community. I'm gonna tell you that Facebook groups are great. There are so many wonderful new features in Facebook groups, but they are hard to build. So you have to um, make a committed decision. If I'm gonna create a Facebook group, that you're, you're gonna have to get in there and work that group um, until it takes off on its own. What you really want is for that group to take off on its own and um, have everyone in that group posting. Um, in fact, I'm gonna tell you, um, I don't know if, uh, especially from my St. Tammany friends, um, and for those of you that are not in Louisiana, St. Tammany is the, so we have, um, parishes in Louisiana, not counties, because I know there are a few people on this call that are not in Louisiana. So St. Tammany is, let's say, the county for you that is next door to our county. Uh, we're in Tanchpaho Parish, and St. Tammany Parish is right next door. So um, for those of you that are not in Tanchpaho Parish, you may not know that um, we started something called Locally Owned Tangy, just I don't even know if it was a month ago. And what we did was we created a whole bunch of graphics and collateral that local, locally owned businesses in our parish could download and use um, however they want to at their leisure to promote that they are a locally owned business. Part of that initiative um, was to, oh my God, y'all. So I'm in this pavilion. I'm sorry. Y'all know that this is just how I am. I go off on little tangents. I'm sitting in this pavilion teaching this class and this gigantic lizard just, it's sitting on there on the floor and totally caught me off guard. So if you're like, what just happened to her? There's, <laughs> I guess that's just what you get working remotely at a campground pavilion. <laughs> um, but anyway, so 
we created the part of that initiative was to create a Facebook group and you can go check it out. It's public. The Facebook group is called locally owned Tangi. And um, what I'm talking about right here is exactly what happened. It's exactly what we want to happen. And that is that we created this community and it has taken a life of its own. I'm not having to be the one going in there posting every single day to keep the life going in the group. I am having to do that in another group that I started um, and I believe in it and I know that it's gonna take off one day, so I'm committed to it. But the locally owned Tangi group um, has, gosh, I think we're probably getting close to 1300 members of that group. And so um, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and create a Facebook group around a specific topic um, to satisfy a like-minded community or group of people. Um, if you're not that pioneer type person, you're not into creating the, the group, then what you could do is your business page, not your personal profile, your business page can join groups in, in your actual geographic community. So um, if let's say, for example, for my friends in St. Tammany Parish, if there's, you know, there's all those like, um, oh man, there's a big one that I can't think of the name. Um, and I see my friends K2 Realty are on this call. I know we talked about some of these groups and um, there's a particular group in St. Tammany Parish, a Facebook group where everybody like finds out about events and they have conversation about what's going on and recommendations for this business or hey I'm looking for this for my kids like it's just a great group for the actual physical community of St. Tammany Parish your Kim? business page yes Kim hey um yes Paul Paul said to let you know that um in locally owned Tangi right now there are 1,390 members so fantastic <laughs> I've been seeing the post <laughs> like crazy um and then Rhonda Rhonda said you may be referring to the Madisonville Mamas as one of the Facebook groups that so many people go to. Yeah, yeah. So um, thanks, Paul, for that update. Uh, it's further along than I, and that's what happens is it just grows and it's like a snowball. So um, I'm super excited about that. Um, and then, yeah, those groups just like that, Madisonville Mamas, there's, there's several. And so if that, if the admin of that group set it so that your business page could join, then your business page can join. And now, instead of you going into the group and commenting on posts and um, posting yourself, you can comment and you can add posts as your business page. Now, let me tell you a little warning. If you're going to engage in a community group, for your business be very careful don't bombard the group being all salesy um add value be a part of the community be helpful be encouraging you know sometimes it may just be that somebody posts um in there and you just comment as your business page way to go congratulations this looks great i love this and then if it's something really cool you can share it so if if the um if the group is a public group then you'll see a share feature so if there's a post in that group then you can share that post on your business page but if it's a private group you won't see that share feature so um, i really want you to start paying attention to um, how you can build community and how you can incorporate your business into the conversation um, about whether it's your industry um, that is uh it that has groups regarding your industry or whether it's local your geographic area whatever it might be so um pay attention to that um and, and and start seeing how are other businesses engaging in these community facebook groups um there's so many so many cool things that you can do with those facebook groups i do want to let you know that um there there are glitches not it doesn't happen a lot but if you join a group as your person as your personal profile you won't see the option to join as your business page so if you leave the group as your personal profile then when you go to click on join group 
if the group is allowing businesses to join, then you will see the option to select your business page. When you join as your business page, you will automatically be joined as your personal profile. When I get live into Facebook, um, I wanna be sure and show you that. So somebody remind me if, if, I, if I lose my mind and don't show you that, I really want you to see. I'll go, I'll go in locally on TNG and show you. Um, so utilize that. I'm gonna kind of slowly get into the reference that I've been saying about they ask, you answer. Here's an example of how um, a, an automotive repair shop that we work with, they're out of, and I don't know if that's the Paul that, that commented um, or not, but um, anyway, Wyman Automotive is, in, is outside of Chicago, Illinois. And what they're doing out of our advisement is getting on video and answering questions that customers are asking often. And this is just one example of that. Notice um, in the screenshot there, the video is just under five minutes, um, but people are engaging with it. And when I say people are engaging with it, if you go to the Facebook page, you may see I don't remember how many people have, uh, have liked or commented, but what I'm getting at is when you go to a Facebook page and you see, well, only two people liked that and nobody commented and only one person shared it in your mind, you're looking at that thinking, well, that's not a very good post. What you really need to do, which I'll show you when we get to Facebook live here and just a, not Facebook live, but when I go into Facebook to show you, um, you want to look at the statistics on the back end of that post so you can go into your insights on your Facebook page and you can um, you can see how many people clicked. So for example, engagement on this post could be clicking, right? They clicked the link in the post there where it says contact us at wymanauto.com. When you go look at a post, our guys are going to see who no comments and one share. You don't know that 42 people clicked that link or whatever the number is, um, or that they clicked on something else in that, in that post. So listen to what your customers are asking and turn that into content, okay? Um, I want to show you now um, how to properly set up your Facebook page. So some people have not, um, have not done this, uh, some people have created a personal profile for their business page. You really need an actual business page, not a personal profile. And the way that you know that is, as you can see here, there's a like button. You like a business page. You don't friend request a business page. So first of all, you want to make sure that when, um, and I encourage you, we actually do this for our customers kind of on a monthly basis. We just put kind of a, um, a checklist together in our project management software and we have it set once a month to just kind of take a peek at this stuff because Facebook will add new features um, and and you just want to make sure that you're taking advantage of everything Facebook has to offer so you want to make sure that you create your page and that you select the right category the type of business that you have um, add consistent branding, which you just saw. It had their logo, their colors. Um, you want to make sure that you are taking advantage of the description area. So many times, and I can't remember. I want to, uh, I want to say it's 250 characters in that description spot. It will let you know when you've exceeded that number. Use the. My home builder friends will like this. Use the. Um, real estate that you've been given take full advantage of that unless you have a super powerful really short one-liner elevator speech slogan if it's really powerful and really speaks to who you are and what you do then your description might be really 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 short but I just want you to take advantage of that spot so many times I'll go to a business page and either they haven't put anything there or what they've put there just doesn't make sense so be sure that you're adding that description in. Also, just check all the boxes. Put in your phone number, put in your email address, put in all the things that Facebook is giving you a spot for. Now, it has to make sense for your business. If you don't have a physical location, you don't have to mark that spot. If you don't want your email address public, then you don't have to do that. 
also know that you can create, like we have here, maybe an info at or a service at or sales at or questions at um, email address. So don't feel like you have to put your personal email address there. This is the one that's public facing. Just be sure that you're using all of the options that Facebook has given to you. And then of course, you can customize your page username. This is what is going to be in the URL, the address at the top. So like www.facebook.com forward slash ours is five stones media. This one is forward slash Wyman Automotive. Um, the other thing is when you are trying to tag a page, when you're creating a post, for example, Five Stones Media, let's say I wanted to create a post and I wanted to um, talk about this class. I wanted to say thank you to the North Shore Home Builders Association for sponsoring and hosting this class. I want to tag North Shore Home Builders in my Five Stones Media Facebook post. The easiest way to do that is to use the page's username. And if you're looking at this screenshot, right here on the left-hand side, directly under the logo, it says Wyman Automotive. And then under that, it says at Wyman Automotive. That's what you would enter into your post. So I would say thank you to at, I think, I think there's this North Shore HBA. Um, I would type that in and their page would come up and I would click it and that will add them um, into my post as a tag. It looks like a link and people can click that and go to the North Shore Home Builders Facebook page. I hope I didn't lose anybody there, but just telling you all the many reasons why customizing your page URL name is really important. Also, you cannot customize that until you have 100 people that like your Facebook page. So if you're not seeing that option, um, just know that that might be the case. If you have a new page and you don't have 100 people yet, you might not be able to do that. Y'all, excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of water. <coughs> Amy, any questions? Nope, no questions. Still 35 people on the call, but the chat room is empty. So All we're right. doing good. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. So let's keep going. Um, the call to action button. I talked to you about this early on, earlier on in the call. Um, you see here that their call to action button is book now and there's a little pencil. You click that pencil and that's how you can edit your call to action button. And what we like to do is change that monthly or quarterly because in the Facebook insights, you can see how many people are clicking that call to action button. So when you test that, you'll be able to know um, this call to action button is resonating more with my audience. They like this better than they like that. Um, and there, you unfortunately, you can't customize that button. You're limited to the options that they have available, but you can really kind of uh, find a way, find something that works for you. You're going to have two or three that definitely relate to your particular business. So try them out and, um, and just see how they, um, how they work for you. It's very visible on a mobile device. And so it makes it really easy for people to be able to communicate with your page. <clears throat> I want you to go through the settings on your Facebook page. I'm going to show you, this is from a mobile view from the, um, from the app. And so I want you to just make sure that all of the settings are set up, but I'm going to show you when I go into Facebook here in a little bit, <clears throat> exactly where to go to review all of those settings. <clears throat> okay. Content. The number one question we, well, okay. I can't say it's number one. People come to us to help them and they take these classes because one, they just don't know what they're doing and they don't know where to get the content or how to create the content or they just don't have the time to do it. So when I share this next section with you, it's to address both of those concerns. One is to tell you the type of content that's working, but also help you have a good understanding of where to get content because the most frustrating thing to do is to decide you're going to do something and then look at a blank screen and go, I don't know what to post today. I want you to have a plan. And so um, that's what we're going to talk about here. The content that works <clears throat> is going to depend on your audience. So you want to look at the um, insights on your Facebook page to see, are people responding to links? Are they responding to videos? 
to images, um, to whatever it might be. There are so many different ways. This is why businesses really like using Facebook because you have a variety of types of content that you can share. Text-based um, posts, which I used to not recommend. Now I do recommend them because you can do it with a colorful background. Um, there's different ways that you can use text-only posts. I don't use them often, but you want to sprinkle different types of content into your strategy. So um, text-only posts, photos, video, um, and, and you see all of the options here. Polls are very popular. Um, pinning your, your posts to the top of your page, using Facebook stories. There's so many different things that you can do with Facebook that allows you to put content out there without boring your audience. You know, I was talking about this campground that I'm at and everything they post is, is a link, if I remember correctly. And it just was, it didn't inspire me. It didn't motivate me. It didn't excite me. It didn't cause me to want to comment. And so that's what you want. If you're going to slow someone's scroll, it's going to be with content that's going to cause them to want to engage with you. <clears throat> okay, so um, this book is really super powerful. There's two, we, my husband most particularly, reads all the time. And um, he's actually not, I don't think he's reading a book right now, but he reads all the time. And I want to read, but it's just a sleeping pill for me. I fall asleep and I just can't seem to stay engaged. So um, when I read, it's usually a really big deal. And this is one of those books that I'm going to show, show you two books um, in this class that both of these books, not only did we read them, but we, it actually caused us to change our process in how we do things. So this book, They Ask You Answers, written by Marcus Sheridan. And if you're into business um, reading, you've heard of Marcus Sheridan, fabulous author. And what he did, so Marcus um, actually owned a pool company, okay? And so for all my home builder friends today, um, th this should trigger your, your thinking. And um, with, his with his pool company, Years ago, he started realizing that people were asking him, do I get saltwater pool or freshwater pool? Do I get, um, oh gosh, uh, like a concrete pool or whatever the material is that you actually build the pool with? Do I do this or do I do that? Which, which type of pump do I put in my pool? And you know, all sorts of questions and the shapes of the pools. And so he realized that he needs to take the questions that his customers were asking him and turn that into content. So that's what this book is all about. And when you are answering your customer's questions, I know this class is all about Facebook, but I want you to stick with me here for a minute. If you take that question, let's, let's go with a uh, fresh water or salt water for the pool. You can, you can answer that question on a video. Take out your phone, answer the question, talk to people, okay? And um, answer that question. That video then gets transcribed and turned into a blog post. The video is on YouTube. The video is uploaded natively to your Facebook page. You're sharing the blog post in your email campaign. Maybe you're listening to that video and you pull out five or 10 different little talking points and you create five or 10 different social media posts all related to that one question. Talk about content. I mean, that's that you're sharing for a couple of weeks. So read this book. I'm not, look, Marcus Sheridan does not know Kim Walker. He has never heard of me. I promise you. And I'm not getting paid to share this book with you. It's just that powerful. And we really believe in it that much. So I want you to really think about the fact that if you just listen to your customers and the questions they're asking, you can turn that into content for a month. Okay, so I hope that helps you. Um, and um, I'm just gonna, let me see here. Okay, I was gonna, I was gonna do something different. Um, 
when you really know your audience, they're, it's a gift. They're going to give you more than you ever thought you needed when it comes to creating your content. Pay attention to them. What do they like? Answer questions. And look, he's a pool company. Well, this class is being hosted by the Home Builders Association. So the members of the North Shore Home Builders Association are home builders. They're um, plumbers, they're painters, they're real estate agents, they're the whole gamut. When you don't feel like relevancy means if I'm a home builder, I can only post content about building a home. If you step back and look at the whole picture, that includes landscaping. That includes how do I pick which neighborhood I want to buy property in. That includes um, do I get a saltwater pool or a freshwater pool? Like you're their resource. You are the person they've chosen to do business with or they're following you on Facebook for a reason. You're the authority on the topic. People are going to trust you. So get to know your customers and their, the demographics of who they are, what they like, what they enjoy, where they work. And, and really, as I've got it bolded here for a reason. What problems are they facing? What problems are your customers facing? How can you solve that problem for them? Think right now with the coronavirus, COVID-19. Maybe something you could be talking about is the air quality in their home. It's, it's about keeping your air clean for your family to be breathing fresh, clean air. That's relevant to what we're facing right now. Um, and we could go on and on listing all the different ideas that have to do with that, but pay attention to your audience. That is, that's where you're going to get your content. Tune into them. Okay. Um, when I talk about your pages feed, this is another place to get content. So sometimes let's say, um, Thursday posts are going to be dedicated to community, right? So if I'm in St. Tammany Parish, every Thursday, I'm going to share something from another business or organization in my community. Maybe every Tuesday, I'm going to do a Facebook Live sharing a tip related to my industry or the business or product or service that I'm offering. So the way you're going to find that information is in your pages feed. Let me explain. Right now, if I picked up my phone and I went to Facebook and I started scrolling, that's the Kim Walker feed of the people I am friends with personally on Facebook, the pages that I have liked or followed, the groups that I'm in. I'm going to see those updates. But the pages feed is the feed where I can go to my Facebook page and now I can look at a feed of the pages my page has liked. So Five Stones Media has liked North Shore Home Builders Facebook page. My Facebook page has liked ENG Designs and Construction. My Facebook page has liked K2 Realty, um, whoever it might be. And so now if they've posted, when I'm looking at my feed, I'm going to see their posts. I can now like, comment, and share. So that's a good place to be getting content, especially if you want to tap into your community and you want to share relevant information. So um, you want to make sure that your page has liked other pages, and I'll show you how to do that. How are we doing on time? We're good. All right. Um, <clears throat> I've talked about this before. It used to be 50, 30, 20, but you can really combine it into 80, 20, where 80% of what you're posting is gonna be the most engaging type of content. It's fun, it's lighthearted, you're gonna inspire someone, you're gonna motivate someone, you're gonna excite them. Um, maybe you're sharing teaser posts or how-to videos. Um, as you can see here, informative, educational, and or entertaining. 20%, 20% of your posts can be promotional. And this is where so many businesses um, really lose their followers is because they've got this flipped. <clears throat> they are um, promoting 80% of the time and being fun and lighthearted, entertaining and engaging, educational 20% of the time. You have to think about yourself 
as a human, we get so bought into our um, business that we're hyper focused on sales and um, and promoting our business that we get excited, we get in there and that's what we're posting and we forget to be human. So 80% is the human type of posts. And um, I just want you to remember that. So if you're posting, this is, not, this is only for numbers, I'm not you need to post 10 times a day, but if you're posting 10 times, not a day, a week, if you're posting 10 times a week, eight of them are informative, educational, entertaining. Two of them, two out of the 10 posts are promotional. It's the, hey, buy from me, look what I did, here's my new product, here's my new service, um, that sort of thing. <clears throat> you want to engage people. Again, put yourself in your customer's shoes when you're scrolling through Facebook, what causes you to slow your scroll? If you are posting fun, entertaining, um, educational, helpful information, 80% of the time, then when you drop that promotional post into the mix, they're going to allow it. They're going to engage with it. They're going to accept it. But if you're being overly salesy and promotional all the time, you're going to lose them. Okay. So the 80, 20 rule is still, still relevant um, in the world of social content. <clears throat> so um, along those same lines, if 80, 20 is too much for you, this is acceptable. A third, a third, a third. Um, even though um, two thirds of those really kind of fit. So it really is 80, 20 still, but you just want to have less promotion. And I'm talking about really salesy, obvious promotional salesy stuff. You can find a way to be salesy, but be entertaining or be engaging, especially if you take advantage of um, fun trends that are going on and the way that you incorporate those into your strategy I'm trying to think of one that that was just came up recently um i might even have an example of this let me keep going okay um knowing when to post this is going to come from your stats i was just having a conversation with a client yesterday um, about this exact topic we were talking about linkedin but it still relates because um it's the same kind of concept when is your audience engaging? I'm going to show you when we log into Facebook here in a minute that um, there's a place where you can go and Facebook will tell you when your audience is online. So you, that's a place to start. Um, then you can see how many people have engaged with your post at what time that it was posted. Um, there's no real one size fits all rule to that. Um, if I said, to, like it says right here, right now we're finding mid morning to mid af afternoon to be optimal, but, and it says shop to shop, but that's audience to audience, um, business to business. It depends on your audience. So you need to be studying your stats and being smart about when you are posting. Um, I told you that I'm going to show you Buffer, which is a scheduling tool. If you are using only Facebook, you don't need a scheduling tool. Facebook has scheduling built in. So if you're only using Facebook, you can literally sit down, just say, for example, Monday at 10 a.m. and schedule your post for the rest of the week or the two weeks ahead or whatever it is that you want to do um, without having to stop and be in the moment and do it at that exact time. If you know you want to post on um, Wednesdays at 10 a.m., you don't have to stop on Wednesday at 10 a.m. to do it. You can schedule that way in advance if you want to. So knowing when to post is going to be really helpful to you. And it's something that your stats are going to tell you. So this, this um, mid morning to mid afternoon it is really a starting point. It's a guide. So start posting at that time, study your stats and see how many people are engaging with your posts. How many people are your posts reaching? And then you can say, you know, all right, if I was posting mid morning and mid afternoon, I'm going to do some posts at eight o'clock at night. Now you can compare, it's a science project, you can compare the engagement level of your posts mid morning to mid afternoon with your posts that you did at night and see um, which ones performed better. What you may find, we have some clients that they have a highly engaged audience at both times. So, um, there, you know, some of their people respond really well in that lunch time. They're taking their lunch break. They're scrolling through Facebook, 
And then some do much better after they've put the kids to bed, they've got a glass of wine, they're sitting back in the sofa at night watching Netflix or whatever it might be, and that's when they're engaging. The only way you're gonna know that is to look at your stats, and I'll show you where those are. Okay, some more content we've talked about getting involved in groups, super critical, especially right now, um, using the auto messages in Messenger, which I told you you can set up in your Facebook page. And then, so this is not an advertising class, it's a whole nother class, but when it comes to putting money on your Facebook, yes, it's important. Yes, it's good for you. And there's different ways of doing that. Creating all out ads that you would do in the ad manager, um, those don't live on your Facebook page. So we've had people we've run Facebook ads for and they're like, I don't see it. Well, an ad is not a post on your page. An ad is created in the ad manager and it's targeting a specific group of people. So if you don't fit in that group of people, you're not gonna see that ad. But a boosted post is a post on your Facebook page that you put money to to make it go farther. Here's the thing. My thought on this is a little different from lots of people. Lots of people think, well, this is a good, good information that I really want to expand and, and you know, get out there. So I'm going to put some money on it. But it's not an engaging post. People aren't liking it. They're not commenting. Why would you post that's not doing well to make it not do well more? That doesn't make sense. Look at your posts. The ones that are doing well, those are the ones that you want to boost. If people are liking, commenting, and sharing, then put some money on it so you can get more people liking, commenting, and sharing. $5, $15, and see how that does. It is not difficult to boost a post. You click the boost post and you answer the questions, put your credit card number in, you tell it, I wanna spend $5 for three days or $15 for four days or whatever, uh, $100 for a week, whatever it is that you wanna do, you fill in the, those blanks and then Facebook will take care of the rest. You can tell it who you want to target. Um, you can pick, <clears throat> the targeting is very similar to in the ad manager, quite frankly, but you can, um, don't be wrong, there are options in the ad manager that you don't have in boosting a post, but, but um, when you boost a post, you can say, I wanna boost this post to the people who like my page, um, to the people who like my page and their friends. You can pick a specific audience based on their geographic settings. Um, or location. Um, if you've created custom audiences, which I'm already getting too far in here, but you can you can boost your post to those people as well. Um, I will tell you that if you have a post with a graphic in it and it has a lot of text, Facebook is not going to approve that. They know what works, and so they want a graphic that is not overwhelmed with text. There's actually a tool, if I can remember, I will show you. Um, you can literally Google Facebook grid tool and you upload your graphic and it will tell you if you have too much text in that graphic to boost a post. So you want, it's less than 20% of the image is text. So um, put the text in the post, put very little text on the graphic, okay? Um, I mentioned Scheduling tools, we like Buffer. I'm gonna show you Buffer. There's also Hootsuite, there's Rignite, there's Sprout Social. There's all kinds of scheduling tools. So if you're using um, more platforms than just Facebook and you wanna just sit down, put all of your content in and do it at one time and have places, then um, you want a scheduling tool. But like I said, if you are only using Facebook, you don't need a scheduling tool. It doesn't Kim? make sense because, yes. Hey, um, I have a question from Ashley. What's the difference between a post and a note? She said it seems that notes have more visual interest but don't get as much engagement. I'm not sure if I know what a note is, I guess. That's just me talking now. <laughs> uh, I'm with, <clears throat> nope, I, I'm, um, I'm actually with you, Amy. I don't know what a note is. I will tell you when I first joined Facebook, oh my gosh, 12 years ago, was the post that was like a long post, like a blog 
um, but they don't have that anymore. So I don't really know what, um, you know, if you want, I think it was Ashley, you can email me, Kim at fivestonesmedia.com. That is the number five, not the word. So Kim at fivestonesmedia.com, give me a screenshot of the note that you're talking about and, um, and, and I'll research it because I think you're probably talking about a note from like years ago that's not really um, an option anymore. Ashley, do you want to unmute and yes. um, ask your question? Sure. And um, Kim, I'll send you an email with that screenshot. It is still an option um, on our page. And you're right, it does kind of look more like the blog um, visual. Um, but I'll send that to you. It's an option on the left side of the page, you know, home about photos, reviews, um, notes, and I can make them look a little better than a regular text post, but they don't seem to get as much engagement. You also cannot schedule notes, which is a downside. So you just gave me a lot of reasons why I wouldn't use it. <laughs> um, but I was just uh, curious. Yeah. And purpose. when you email me, just tell me that email me a link to your, your business page so I can take a look at it. Um, it's certainly not. And it could be depending on the type of, are you a home builder? Or what's your business? Uh, no, it's a government page. Okay. So it could very well be that um, depending on the category, the type of page that you have, they have different features. So a local service uh, as opposed to a news outlet or gov pages have different, um, different options there. So um, yeah, if, if you're finding and you're doing exactly what I'm talking about is look at your stats. So if you're finding that um, the notes don't, are not getting the engagement you're looking for, just stop using them. And if it's long form content that you're looking for, um, you can create a pretty nice long post in Facebook with an image, um, and those do well. It could be, I, I know I've said Facebook doesn't like to let you leave Facebook, but if you're not doing it all the time, it's not something I would be worried about, but it could just be that it's a blog on your website or, or something like that, that you just share a link to. So, um, I hope that helps, but definitely send it to me because I want to take a look at it. It's just been so long since I've seen or heard anybody talk about um, notes in Facebook. So I'm glad you brought that question up. All right. Okay, thank you. Let's keep going and talk about, which I've been talking about is measuring. So, um, actually reference, like she's obviously looking at, um, the stats. Now what you're seeing here is a screenshot, um, from the Facebook pages manager app. I purposely put a screenshot of that in here because so many people, um, don't download that app to manage their page on the phone when they're, you know, on the fly out and about, um, and they don't have their computer with them. So, um, these are things that you can see in the Facebook pages manager app that you cannot see in the regular Facebook app. So here you can see some insights. So it's on the mobile device, but it is of course also on the desktop computer. Um, and you will get more on the desktop than you will in the um, in the app on your phone. But again, I just wanted you to see that it will show you posts that you've boosted. It will show you um, how many um, people your posts are reaching, um, in, how many people are engaging, how, many, how much your page likes are up. Um, and so uh, it's just really good information to have. And so if you're looking at that screenshot, Again, this is, and this is an iPhone, but at the very bottom of the page, the second button from the left has the little like line, line graph. Um, that's the tab that you select to see your page insights. Notice that you can change the date range at the top. You can start a promotion from there. You can look at the posts and how they're doing. And then you of course keep scrolling and get more information. But when I get to Facebook here in just a few minutes, I'm almost finished with this presentation, then we'll go into Facebook itself. Um, I will show you where you can see these insights and more on your business page. Um, so here's screenshots of what I'm gonna show you live. Um, 
But when you go to your Facebook page up above your cover image, it says insights. And this is what you're going to see when you get there. And what you're not seeing here, which I'll show you when we get there, is on the, on the left side of this, the first screenshot here says page summary. On the left side of that is a long list of um, insights that you can dig into a little deeper. So this first screenshot on the left is the page summary um, for the last 28 days of this particular page. And you can see, obviously green is good. You can see the green percentages are up. Um, a lot of times though, I, I wanna warn you, people will see red and they literally see red. They're like, oh my gosh. But keep in mind, if you boosted a post, so this is the last 28 days. Let's say that some of these numbers were red, okay? Or the, the percentages were red and it your reach is down and all these numbers are down um, but you had just done a paid promotion before this last 28 days where all your numbers were through the roof and now you're not doing a paid post and so your numbers have come back down to normal so know your page know your strategy know what you've been doing don't get super focused on coming to the page and you just see red, you're like, oh my gosh. If you did a, a boosted post or you ran an ad before, you will see um, where the numbers have come down. Okay, um, another uh, spot in the insights is to see your page growth, um, which is page likes. Um, and you can see over on the right hand side of this um, slide where I've got three little, or one big screenshot there. What I wanna point out to you here is page likes down at the bottom. Notice the pink section that says unlikes. That's nothing to be concerned about. There's one here, one there, one there. What you're looking for are peaks and valleys. Like, for example, um, you can see on this page, the dark blue where there's a big spike in page likes is from paid likes. Those people like that page as a result of an ad. But then you'll see the pink at the bottom. What I'm looking for are big, huge moments in time where a lot of people suddenly unliked the page. That is something you're, you want to be like, okay, what did we do wrong? Did we post something that turned people off? Or did a bad review come through? Or what happened? So you're looking for moments in these stats that caused you to go, I need to check into this further, okay? So just, um, just look at that and keep that in mind when, when you get to looking at your insights. And what I would say, look, we're all busy running businesses here. You can't spend an enormous amount of time looking at this stuff. What I want you to do is create a schedule that works for you. If you have 10 minutes a week to just put it on your calendar and every Tuesday at 10 a.m., whatever it is, you're going to take a peek at your Facebook insights. Great. If you can only do it every two weeks, if you don't do it once a month, I'd rather you do it a little bit more often than that, but once a month is totally fine. Um, at least you're looking at it. Um, what you don't want is to get so far down the road and you realize something happened six months ago that you should have corrected and you've been doing it for six months now. So just keep an eye on those insights. And that's why it's so nice to have it on your phone because maybe while you're, which nobody is sitting in a waiting room right now during COVID, but you know what I mean? When you, when you find yourself sitting um, and just wait, instead of scrolling Facebook, look at your insights and take a peek at them. Um, I love this option where your page can watch other pages. You can go in and these would obviously be people in your industry. Maybe it's a competitor. And if nothing else, it's just for you. You might feel like, hey, my page isn't really doing so well. But then you look at other people and you're like, okay, I, I actually. So um, you can easily do that right there from your insights. Um, and you can um, kind of compare yourself to how um, you, other pages are doing. And, um, and pages, you can watch up to five pages in addition to obviously your shows up there. Um, you can enter five pages to watch. And it used to be that um, that page wouldn't know that your page was watching, but they would get a notification that someone was watching, um, but they don't even do that anymore. So um, also it might be on the next screen, not on the next screen, but I'll show you when we get there. Facebook will also show you 
the highest performing posts that your your pages you're watching what they're doing so you can see oh okay well they do really well when they do tips on tuesday and they're doing this campaign or whatever or you know pictures of this type of or this type of picture is doing really well maybe i should try that um, so we have talked about not getting distracted by vanity metrics i'm not going to spend any more time on that um, we just talked about taking some time for yourself to take a look at your insights and see how your page is doing so that not only can you keep track of how you're doing but you may notice trends you may notice that when we do this um, every Tuesday this is happening or um, you'll find little little nuggets of information in your um, page insights to help you develop content going forward okay so look for those trends over time um, so that you can use that to your benefit then your next steps um, is to create a calendar so you know all of our clients are different it totally depends on you it depends on what you're willing to do it depends on your customers what they're looking for um, it may be that uh, and this is just i'm just throwing stuff out there maybe on mondays you post motivational quotes maybe on thursdays you're posting something about the community that you're in maybe on tuesdays you're doing tips um right so find, kind of create a content schedule a content plan for what you're going to post and when that makes creating content much easier maybe every wednesday you're sharing a review from a client or a testimonial um, so think about that so that you're not sitting there scratching your head wondering what am i going to post where am i going to get this content i don't know what to do with this use national days be careful that you don't go crazy with these but they're a great resource and sometimes people really love them so if you go to um, nationaldaycalendar.com this will be in the resources that i send to you afterwards it will tell you um all of the awareness months right so it's may may is um skin cancer awareness month melanoma awareness month i'm saying that because i'm a melanoma skin cancer survivor um and so that's important to me and i just happen to know that it's may um it will tell you the different weeks so like teacher appreciation week was the first week of may um it will tell you so months weeks and then it will break it down by day so today is may 19th who knows what today is but maybe it's national protein shake day or it's national um pick up trash day or whatever it is you can look through the whole month and pick out a couple of ones that relate to you and your business um and if, if it's national ice cream ice cream day but you're not an ice cream shop how can you make that relevant maybe you create an event i know it's covid so you know this is not a good example but maybe it's national ice cream sandwich day and you say hey meet me at xyz park on this date at this time for free ice cream sandwiches courtesy of xyz home builder you just took <clears throat> ice cream and made it relevant to um, your audience why because you're a home builder and you're building homes for families families have kids who like ice cream in the summer so take something and make it into something that works for your business set an appointment with yourself literally put it on your calendar because it will not happen otherwise something else is going to get in the way so if you create an appointment on your calendar and you say you pick the day you pick the time every thursday at 2 p.m i'm going to sit down for 30 minutes i'm going to sit down for one hour whatever you can do and i'm going to up for two weeks or maybe you whatever works for you okay everybody has their own thing create your scheduling plan and decide if you need a tool or if you don't if you're just doing Facebook you don't need a scheduling tool okay <clears throat> all right so thank you to the Home Builder Association I'm gonna come off of this um, and I'm going to go over um, to Facebook um, Okay, so <clears throat> these are our friends at ENG 
designs and construction. And <clears throat> I just want to show you a couple of things. I'm lying. I'm going to show you several things. We have about 30 minutes. I'm going to stop a little bit early for questions, even though I know y'all are asking questions as you go throughout. But if I scroll down this page, <clears throat> see this right here where it says see pages feed? Um, see pages feed. I just got a notification that my, my AirPods battery is dying, so I may need to take them out and use the computer audio. Um, see pages feed. If I click on this, then that is going to bring me to um, a, a feed once it will load where um, let me just get out of here and see if I can see if I can pull one up on a, a different um, a different page. <clears throat> Go to five stones. By the way, some some pages you don't see this um, this see pages feed option right here. Know that if you don't see that, follow me up to the top up here. You can click on see pages feed there. If you don't have that option, literally just come up here and add pages underscore feed and hit enter. That's a shortcut to get there as well. So, um, of course, because, okay, there we go. So these are pages that Five Stones page has liked. Okay. Um, and so I can scroll through and Five Stones can like this post from our friends at Tangy Meats and say, you know, so this is talking about wild game. We could comment on there. Um, Chapapila Sports Park, they're sharing, you know, we can like this. We can say, um, what a beautiful scene, right? We're now engaging. So I wanted to show you the pages feed. Um, that's really super important. Um, moving on, notice I don't see the notes option over here, but you can customize your, your, um, your tabs in the settings, which I'm gonna show you now. So if we go up here to settings, this is gonna bring you to all of these different places where you know there's general settings, page info, so on and so forth, templates and tabs. This is where I was just saying you can customize those tabs on the left. You can add or remove them, um, the ones that you don't want on there. And look, be careful with that because we've had some people that um, they used some type of software, whether it's to get reviews or grow their email list or um, to add booking software. Then they stopped using that software, but they forgot to remove that tab. So be sure that that's not you. You want to go and check all of that information and see if you need to clean that up. So you can look through all of these settings. Um, each one of them, it pretty much describes what it is. You can edit that. One thing that we like to do um, is we've had, um, we've had businesses that were very local businesses, but they were getting comments and weird messages from, from different countries you can come here and say only show my page to people in the United States. You can do that. And that makes it so that you're kind of filtering out anybody um, from outside of the area that you serve. Another thing that we really like is page moderation and profanity filter. You can set that to strong medium. You can actually type in words that if people use those words in the comments, it automatically hides those posts. So just know that you have all these settings in here that you can update. Your page info, um, again, this is a place where I want you to check on this monthly, quarterly, something like that, because you'll want to um, make sure that if you get any new features that you're taking advantage of them, okay? So like this, sync contact info on Instagram, I've never seen that. And I look at this stuff all the time. This one button right here is brand new. Um, this map is brand new. <laughs> um, they're using, uh, let's see here. It used to be Bing. Um, let me click here and see. It's not telling me. I, I don't know which map system that Facebook is using, but this certainly looks very different than it used to look. So you can actually drag your little pin there. If that's not exactly correct, you can move that around. Um, 
so on and so forth. So just kind of scroll through and look at all of your settings. Another thing I want to make sure that you're paying attention to are your page roles. Who are you allowing to be admins, editors of your business page? Um, we are actually, we use the business manager, which most of you are probably not using. What I want to make sure that you're paying attention to is that the people who have admin access, um, the people who have admin access to your page are who you want to have admin access to your page. I want you to note that there are different levels. So admin, editor, moderator, advertiser, analyst, and custom. What I'm about to say to you, you're gonna be like, well, wait a minute, all those people are admins. Remember, I'm using Facebook called the business manager because we manage so many pages. So they're admins in my business manager. Really the only people that should be admins on your actual business page are like owners, super top level people. Um, I would rather see you have people set as an editor or less. An editor is great. The only difference between, and if y'all are like, if you like, or like overdoing something else, like this is really important <laughs> to Liz, I want you to hear this. The editor and the admin, the only difference between those two, and you can, you can read the description here, the editor can do every single thing that an admin can do except for one thing, add or remove other admins. I don't want to be negative, but let's play for a minute and let's say that your customer service person is really great with Facebook, they're 22 years old and they really know how to do it and so you have them set as an admin. And you're kind of a hands-off person, you're off running your business, doing what you're doing, and you have them set as um, an admin. But then something goes wrong and you don't like that person and not, I don't know why I just said that, you don't like that person. That's, I don't even know where that came from, y'all. Something goes wrong and you need to fire that person or something goes wrong and that person quits. Okay. Either way, they're not with your company anymore, but they are an admin of your page and they remove you as an admin and they take over your page. And I know that sounds crazy and you would think nobody would do that. Yes, they would. I see it happen more often than I care to share with you. So you want to be careful and pay attention. You know, a lot of times we're busy running our business and, um, you know, someone quit or someone got fired and you don't, it's not part of your um, process to think, let me go remove them from Facebook. Um, but you want, that's why I'm saying, take a peek at these things um, often. Okay. So there's lots of information in here. Some of it will not apply to you. You don't need to worry about, you'll know when you get into it, but there's really good information here. There's no way I can go through all of it. Um, then let me go to, um, the insights. By the way, for any of you that like freak out over the red like splats of like 99 plus notifications, I check names in the business manager, not here in this section. So don't um, don't judge me. Don't be like she's not checking her notifications. I check them in a different place. You'll see that we we do respond to people, and so we're checking that. So. Um, here is where the overview tab is where you can see here um, the, that screenshot that I showed you. And again, we had just done a paid, this is a perfect example. We had just done a paid promotion. And so I've got a lot of, but we also study our numbers. And I mentioned in a little earlier is that we've realized we've been super heavy on the company culture um human side and we need to be more they ask you answer and we have seen um a decline in our numbers and we believe it has something to do with that so in combination with we um i think it was a, a boosted post we did or something I notice this is just the last seven days so attention to your numbers so that you always know how you're doing and then you can keep scrolling down on this page to see the section, which I'm not going to show you because 
I don't need to show which pages we're watching. Um, but if you scroll further down on this overview page, this is where you can um, type in other pages that you want your page to watch. Okay, you can check on any ads you're doing, your followers. Um, I, I'm going to only show you a couple of these because I want to also show you Buffer and Canva as well. So this is where you can see page growth. You can see um, see how see how I was saying uh, that you want to look for peaks and valleys. Well, here on a very short, so April 21st, 22nd, um, we added 20 new likes to our page on April 21st and 22nd. So I want to be like, hmm, what do we do on that day? So I'll go back into my pages, my page and look down to the date to see what happened because I want to do that again. And notice that um, it's not that dark blue, so it's not paid where we did that. That was organic. It even says it here. You can see when you hover over, it says organic followers. So um, you know what that is? Locally owned Tangi. That's when we started locally owned Tangi. I'm pretty positive. So you can see that um, we also were um, over here this date probably. Yep, that's probably May 12th. Yes, that's when we did the Action News 17 video about locally owned Tangi. Um, so you want to be able to say this is why this happened. Um, where you're, this happened on the page, they came directly to our page to like our page. So that makes sense with Tangi, um, what's happening up here. The other thing I wanted to show you is posts. This is where Facebook is gonna show you when your audience is online. So you can hover over the different days up here, Friday, Thursday, so on and so forth. Ours is pretty much the same across the board. You might be different, but I can see that um, 6 p.m. is a good time. Um, it used to be 9 p.m., now it's 6 p.m. Um, this probably changed during the whole coronavirus situation. So when things start getting back to normal, I'm going to want to pay attention to this again, but this is going to give me a guide as to the best days and time of day to be posting. Also noticed up here, this will break down by the types of posts, um, photos, links, videos, um, when we've shared a video, gives you information here. And then this is where I can see what posts on pages that my page is watching are doing well. So I can look at that also. If I keep scrolling, it's gonna um, give me lots of information about um, each individual post. Your eyes probably went right here. Organic this post reached nearly 650 people. When on average, you can see, you know, it's, it obviously performed better. So um, this was on May 15th. Let me click here to see more details. This is what I want you to dig in and really find out what people are liking about that post. Oh, this was the post. So it was National Armed Forces Day, and I talked about my brother, my nephew, and my own son. Um, and so here I could see um, all kinds of additional data about that particular post. So this is my engagement, right? Reactions, comments, shares, 47 on that post. Um, and, and again, remember how I was saying you can look at a post and you see, okay, 17 people liked it. There was only one comment and only two shares, but that, there were 89 um, engagements, um, 42 people clicked that post. There were 13 other clicks and you can, you can hover and see all the different types of um, levels of engagement that that is with regard to clicks. So you can see more information information about how your posts are doing when you actually click on them. Over here is where you can notice the time. This one was on uh, at 9.30 in the morning on the 15th. Um, if I look this one, um, this one here was at 12 p.m. So 9.30 in the morning, noon, and you know, I can keep looking and see that was it. So it looks like that morning um, kind of time is when our posts tend to do better. So you can keep scrolling and looking through. Okay, so I want to spin. Um, there was something that I wanted to show y'all. 
before I leave out of Facebook. Oh, the group. Let me show you locally on NG. Wait for it to come up. All right, so there we are. So in this group, notice right here, it says that I'm interacting as myself. People often forget this part. That means post into this group, I'm going to be posting as Kim Walker. I can click here and I can change it to any of these other that I add in. So I can change it as five stones. And when I do that, this little section right here is going to change to five stones. This will change to five stones and I will be but in here, um, I can remember you can pin um, you can pin announcements to your group. Um, you can invite friends into the group, um, and um, I accidentally clicked something. So you can also categorize the posts so you can pin a topic. Um, notice that. As I keep scrolling, see this one. This is a salon, and um, Ginger has got them being open and following the protocol. It's tagged as a personal services um, post. You can edit those posts and manage those posts so that when people come in and search for a specific topic, they eat. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot that you can do with the groups. Um, again, this group has. 1,390 members that Paul said. So um, just wanted you to see that you can post in there as your business page, okay? So let me show you Buffer. Um, actually, what I wanna do is I wanna show you Canva. I think that's more important than Buffer just in case there's someone only using Facebook. And then I'll jump into Buffer just to wrap it all up and finish up the class. So um, Canva is an incredible place to come and you're going to start with organizing Canva. Uh, it is a free tool, it's a paid option, I think $15 a month, we pay for an AC and we're using it um, on, a, on a different kind of level. Um, but you can create different folders in, in here, sort of different customers. Um, that is where you can um, so I'll go to our five stones. I hate that it's not in alphabetical order. It kind of drives me crazy. Although if I click folders. Okay, so I'm in my five stones folder in here. I can add those, right? Images that we're gonna use and we're gonna put our logo on it and we're gonna use it for our graphic that we're going to use on social and so here are the designs so this was the one I just showed you this is where we just put my son's picture um, I'm going to open that because there were three pictures if you remember in that post so this is the um, graphic that we used um, when it finishes loading here my son picks put blue because um, that's part of our brand colors blue and green and we put the text and then same thing for the, the um, graphic about my brother, different little pictures that I gave her. It's really loading, so I'm sorry. Um, but there are wonderful templates built into Canva. So you could, um, you could easily come into Canva, because I'm not a graphic designer. I'm not good at that stuff. And so I need a template to use where all I have to do is change out the picture add some text on top of it, maybe put my, um, my logo on it. So you start here by clicking create a design or you can scroll through. So we're gonna create a design for a Facebook post. Um, and then it's gonna give me all of these templates that I can pick from. And again, then you're just gonna switch out the font. You're gonna switch out the picture, the text. You're gonna change it for yourself. And they have it, um, broken down over here by category. So there's lots of coronavirus related posts that you can 
uh, our graphics that you can pick from. Mother's Day is coming up, so we can we can pick a picture, uh, a graphic, and switch it out. Um, you can look at Earth Day. You can um, and, and look. Don't get wrapped up in this as a Facebook food post. This could be your home builders post. So I'm gonna just pick this and notice that there's, there's three different images here. I have folders because I've been organizing everything. I'm gonna go to my friends at END. And there will be pictures in here of let's say a home that they built. And maybe I want this post, depending on the pictures that I have in here, I could, um, I could have this post focused just on kitchens and it could just be just kitchens. Maybe it's some weird national day that relates to super trendy kitchens or whatever it might be. So um, I am going to, you can see all these graphics. These are actually the designs. This uh, page hasn't finished loading, but up here I would be able to select photos that we've uploaded specifically for them. Um, and so I could put, you know, this kitchen here, I could put a bedroom there, I can put a, the, the front of the house there. Um, so for example, I just click and drag and put it right in that spot. Because of the internet, I'm sorry y'all, it's, um, it's not playing with me well. What should be happening is this little square would, would light up and that's where I would drop that picture, but the internet is just not good. So you can adjust that. And then I can click in here and change this text to say kitchens we love. You know, we can change this text. We can change this text. I can come over here and find their logo to drop in. I can just drag their logo. I can resize it. Um, maybe this color is not the color for them. So because I've got all of the exact colors um, in here, I can pick that color. Um, I think I might have looked it over. Where's ENG? All right, I can see it. But um, I would have their colors specifically right there. So I can come down here and um, change, you know, we can change this background color to whatever color we wanted to something that's, that's more fitting for that particular brand. Okay. So you can adjust all of this, however you want to. So that's one thing that I wanted to show you just briefly in buffer. And then you can literally just click, Hey, download, and you can tell it, I want this to be a PNG. JPEG, so on and so forth. Also, you can make it an animated little movie. You can pick different options. And so since video is doing so well, you can make this an animated little video that you can share on your Facebook page, which is super cool. Um, so I wanna show you, we have just a couple of minutes left. Buffer is the tool that if you are scheduling into um, different platforms, for example, I have our five Facebook page, um, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, I can create a post here and I can select Five Stones Facebook, Insta, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And I create my post, I add a hashtag, I can add a little emoji in here, all the things that I want my website is going to pull the image from my website, but I say, you know, I don't really want that image. I want to use my own image. So I can click upload image, an image that I want to be associated with that particular post. Um, so I'm going to pull that picture of Brian in, let it upload. And once that happens, then I'm just going to look my post and say, okay, I'm happy with it. If you don't want buffer, to shorten it or change it, you can hit one to use. So then I can, and of course you can edit this. You can say, meet Brian, and you can um, change the text here as well. And then you click customize for each network. And now I can um, 
update it to fit Twitter. If it's too long to shorten it, I can shorten it for my Facebook post. If I wanted to customize it any further, Instagram, what I love about Instagram is that um, I can add my first comment. I can put my hashtags in here. So hashtags are great. Instagram, um, you can put maybe five hashtags in your post, but then you can add your first comment. So say small business owner, we can say locally owned, and so on and so forth. You can add additional um, hashtags for your first comment to get them out of your post. You can put them in the first comment. And then if you wanted to edit your LinkedIn post, you do all of this at one time, and then I'm gonna hit schedule, and I'm gonna pick the day, maybe I want that on Friday at 10 a.m. You can come up here, Friday, 10 a.m., and I would hit schedule. I'm not gonna hit schedule because I, this is a play post. I'm not really doing it. So um, I'm gonna come. You can do all sorts of, um, all sorts of cool things there. So my ear, ear, ear pods or whatever you call them have just died. Let me um, come back into the, the Zoom call here. Um, stop sharing my screen and check in with everyone. Give me a thumbs up if you can still hear me because I just got rid of my ear pods. Okay, good. Um, so, Cam, have I just have one question. It's left. Um, open for questions, Amy. Yes, um, I think Doreen is the one that asked the question. How do you get the pictures on there in the left box? And this is when you were on Canva. So, I, okay. Doreen, if you want to unmute and ask, I understand. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Doreen, go ahead. Yeah, when you're on Canva, you were moving the pictures that were already there, but how do you get them there to start? Good question. So I'm in the folder, and when I click right up here, it says upload. I just click upload and pick the, the picture. So if, you, if you're a home builder, you have a bunch of pictures of the home that you just built. Um, you would have them on your computer. You click right here, upload, and then you go pick the pictures off of your computer and it will put them into that folder. Okay, how do you start a folder? Um, so you can start a folder. I'm gonna come back home and I'm gonna go down here to folders. And then right here it says create a new folder. And also know that Canva has its own little school so you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also email me, call me if you have questions, but you can see we could, you can now, and I think my friend Sherry Hamilton is on this call. She's actually from um, Kansas City. You can, they do a great job of this, super organized. You can create folders inside your folders. Right. So I know a lot of my home builder friends like to organize their photos by their, the home itself. So you could have your company folder and then inside that folder, you could say, um, 123 Crepe Myrtle Lane. And that folder has all the pictures for Crepe Myrtle Lane, or you could have a folder for our kitchens, a folder for foyers, a folder for outdoor, outdoor kitchens or master bathrooms or whatever it might be. So, um, Anyway, I know I over answered your question, sorry. No, no, I appreciate it. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other questions? Kim, I don't How have any, any you... I don't have any questions in the chat box, so um, you can wrap it up or if you want to ask questions, go right ahead. Well, I'm just curious if, if um, folks want to just give a thumbs up, let me know if you're using more than Facebook and you think you do need a scheduling tool. I, so a lot um, of people aren't using I just started Hootsuite and one of the, and my daughter's helping me with it, but one of the things that um, it was frustrating is that if it may not fit for Instagram. And so then I'm ending up deleting all of them to try to make them work. So this, I like the way you could then, you could edit for that specific one. I may yeah, give Buffer so a try. That is um, a great comment. Let me elaborate on that because lots of people were really concerned when Instagram first um, was allowing people to schedule. 
um, Hootsuite very proudly came out and said, oh, you can schedule Instagram on our platform. And you could, but it would not automatically publish. It would notify you in the app on, on your phone, for example, or it'd send you an email and say, okay, you scheduled a post for today at 10 a.m. Now it's time to go publish your post. So it, it was scheduling, but it wasn't really publishing it. Now it will. And what I do want to tell you is that, um, so Facebook images are more rectangular than Instagram images that are very square. So if you design your graphic for Instagram, it will work well for Facebook as well. So we tend to design in a square. And the reason why I'm telling you that is that if your picture, let's say you have a picture of your kitchen that you just built and you go post, put schedule that into Instagram. If it's not cropped to be the size for the Instagram image, it's not going to automatically post for you. It is going to remind you and say, hey, because this, this image is not the right size, it's time for you to go manually po post it. So what I say is just um, go ahead and, and what, what's that quote about start with the end in mind? If you know that you're gonna post to Instagram, create your graphic the size that Instagram wants it to be, which is, is a square. Um, you can literally Google what size should my Instagram image be and it will tell you. Um, so hope that helps somebody. But yeah, so um, Amy's gonna send me the list of registrants and um, we will be sending you an email that will have um, the recording and it will link uh, you to my slide presentation and also link you to our resources page where I will put the link to Buffer and Canva and um, any of the things that, that I've already mentioned that would be helpful to you as you move forward with um, your Facebook strategy. But um, I will say that we all know reviews are important to our businesses. So if you loved this class or you think it helps you, we would certainly welcome um, a Google review or a Facebook review or just tell your friends. Um, and um, again, thank you, Amy and North Shore Home Builders, as always, for being great friends of Five Stones and um, allowing us to put this class on. We are located in Hammond, um, we're a marketing agency, and just to break it down, we do your marketing for you. So that's that's who we are, that's what we do. So if you ever have questions or need something, certainly you can reach out to us, and the best way is just to go to fivestonesmedia.com, which is the number five, not the word. But um, again, if you have, have questions, shoot me an email, kim at fivestonesmedia.com, and Amy, I'm, I'm done unless you have something else. Okay, thank you, Kim. This class was um, brought to you by the Sales and Marketing Council of the HBA. Um, our Sales and Marketing Chairperson, Amber Libby, is, is with us. And I don't know if, Amber, if you want to say anything to the group, I, on behalf of HBA and Sales and Marketing, want to thank you. And I've got a few people popping up on the chat that um, you can check out. Lots of people saying thank you, great information, and things like that. So, I, I took notes. I know you're going to send the presentation, but I'm a note taker and there are things that I can't wait like, to go and actually try right now. So, <laughs> um, so I learned and I thank you so much, Kim. And we heard you the whole way. So, um, so that was great. No problems there. If anybody wants to say something, wave to me now. Otherwise, we will end the meeting. Lots of thank yous coming in. I appreciate it, Kim. All Enjoy right, your thanks. time with your boy. Thank you. Y'all have right. a good day. Bye-bye.